background as to what's happening. So, uh, but before that, I'll start by. So there's a new API. Uh, it's coming out in uh, a couple of different browsers, and it's called Service Workers. And they're they're really new, um, as my colleague here will probably show you. But they have a lot of potential to really change how we think about web applications and the way web applications interact with the browser and the end user operates. So can I just quickly ask, has anyone here tried to work with like manifest and an app cache and stuff like that to make things go online? But I don't know what your guys' experience with that, but I found it's it's insane. Like trying to debug it for what versions are all, all this kind of stuff is it just it never works. Um, so service workers is meant to kind of get away from the declarative model of handling things like your cat, cat, cash, excuse me, and saying, you know what, we're not going to come up with a model that works for everybody. And there's so many weird use cases, there's times when you want to be caching things that maybe are like you know, requests to static resources, and other times it's a resource that's going to be generated on the fly. It gets, it gets very complicated. So they took a step back and said, how can we address this in a different way? And maybe expose it programmatically to developers. So basically, what a service worker is, is it's almost exactly like a web worker, um, except it persists beyond the lifetime of the page. So like when you close the tab, normally the web worker would disappear and collect them and stuff. The service worker is still around running things, which is pretty cool. Um, and the service worker also has this cool little API in it that lets it go and intercept network requests that are going on, whether you're on or offline. So you can basically go and say, if I'm offline, search up the cache that I've set up myself. Otherwise, go and you know, get the real data from the internet. And it's interesting too because they, uh, the caching itself, to get around some of the issues with retrieving things from other domains and stuff like that, there's a caching API where you basically say, get me the data for this and put it in the cache, and then you can later get it. But your ability to actually work with the data in there is kind of limited from the service worker. It's, you can basically, the only thing you can do with it is return it to the web browser, to the main page. Um, so they get around some security issues that way, but it's a bit of a kind of boot when you're first in there and playing with it and you can't access things that you know are in the cache. Um, so what I'd like to do is show you guys a quick demo here. So this is the Exchange.js website. I have managed to hit our throttling limit for GitHub page builds. So I'm trying to make that this is developed offline. And eventually we're going to have something with like calls out the APIs that will show you know the next meetup and stuff like that, which is why we're using the service worker. So they just released a new version of Chrome yesterday, which had a bunch of changes around service worker and these things for background jobs, which was awesome, and I'm going to try to show you guys. That. But it also appears that you might have broken service workers when developer tools are offline or are open and you go offline. So I'm going to kind of show you guys how this will work, and then I'll show you the developer tools, what's happening on back end. Unfortunately, I can't have developer tools open. Why not do that is what I discussed. Um, okay, so right now I'm just serving this off my local uh, file system, uh, Python server. And what it is, is it's just a web page, nothing fancy. But so the interesting thing is I can go here and yeah, I can kill my server. So my server is no longer running. But if I reload this, it's still got all the resources available and stuff like that. I can click on links and through and you know it's caching images, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so now it's perfect it just breaks. So I'll open this up and right now if I got server running again, so I tools. Under resources, you can see there's this thing called a service worker um, that's running now. And so what these are are these are basically just a script. So you can hear, see here this is the script you run. Um, and it's registered by the main page, and then from there it takes over and can intercept requests. So I'll give you guys a quick peek at that. Um, I'll just show you the bug that I was having just so you guys can see. So if I go like this, I stop my server, go back to the page, the same offline behavior that was working before, now it does this. So I'm pretty sure that's a regression or some kind of bug. Kind of Did you have disabled cache on network? Um, oh, maybe. That's a good question. It, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, oh, I wonder if you're right. It's, okay. it's <laughs> sure. I, it's, they changed the behavior about two months ago for that. Mm -hmm. We ran into that for the manifest all the time. All right, let's see if I can bring this back up. Okay, so it's a lot of things to refer to. So you're saying if I go like this, it might work. Yeah, okay. Um, 
What's the advantage of service workers? Over... No, no, sorry, not over, but w w why would I use service workers? Um, so I'll get into that a bit more, but there's a couple of So right now, the um, main thing is that they, they interface with the cache and when you intercept network requests. But the really cool thing is that a lot of um, browser manufacturers and like the W3C are seeing this as an opportunity to introduce APIs that can run in the background. So for example, Chrome um, has, right now it's, it's tied to the Google Cloud thing, it's proprietary, um, but they're, they're working to kind of remove the proprietary from it. Um, but there's a like push messaging, <coughs> and so you have a worker that runs in the background even when your page is closed, and then when it gets a message from the cloud, it can go into pop up notification, open tabs, all sorts of things like that. It's almost like what you do with an extension, um, but it's cool because it's, it's all like open standards, and um, it's in Quinn already in both browsers. And um, you don't need to worry about having an extension, it's just a web page that does it. So, and they're talking about adding uh, APIs that support things like geofencing. So, you can go and say, my service worker is interested in you know, being awoken when you move in a certain area, or you move out of an area, things like that. Um, the other ones, too, that I'll talk about briefly, they have two things. They have a background sync task that you can set up. So, you can basically say, I want to do a sync at some point in the future. And if you're plugged in or running off power, it'll do it right away. But if you're in like for mobile or maybe on something where the power is really low, the actual OS can make a decision about deferring that until it's an optimal time and the network is already running and you know, the device is already high and stuff like that. So there's some anything like normally doing something like that where you can kind of optimize your power isn't an option. And the next kind of part of that spec that's coming out is a periodic task or periodic sim. So you can say every hour go and at an you know, appropriate time around an hour connect, maybe check to see if something changed, if you have any messages, or anything like that. So it's pretty cool. Like, there's already a lot of APIs that you just couldn't even build using what we have right now because you need the tab to be open. And this basically gives you a whole new way to have stuff running even when the tab is closed and users in the browser. So. Do you know how that works for mobile? Well, that's the nice thing is it all works for mobile because it's all invented, right? So it's similar to the, like, has, have anyone used the uh, a lifetime and a kind of events for Chrome extensions. Uh, a couple years ago, they changed it. And it went from something where it was persistently running to more of an Android app, where it can go and be terminated at any time, and then uh, it can be reactivated later on. So these are the same kind of thing. Uh, I'll show you the mode if you're like, on a different app on your mobile device. Yeah, exactly. Um, so like here, right now, the worker, I had to put a debugging code trying to figure out what was going on. Um, so it goes and inside the worker itself, I'll explain how to register this later, uh, you can set an event listener on itself and then it receives kind of different lifetime events. So you can see here there's one for it's getting installed. So that's a very quick time. I've just been downloaded. I need to get set up before I can start handling things. So that's what this is. Uh, activate is I'm already installed and it's decided for some reason that I need to activate to do something. I have a page that's open or something like that. Um, and then fetch is another interesting one. That's something that you use to intercept the network requests. So whenever uh, a request is on the page, it invokes this fetch. Okay. Does that fetch just fetch? Um, does that just intercept the new fetch API, or is it also a fetch? Um, well, intercept it, old school like, uh, It intercepts everything, but it exposes it through the new fetch API, okay. which I actually have issued with fetch API because one of the things I ran into is that you can't cancel requests right now with the fetch API. Um, and there's like a whole can of worms about how cancelable, cancelable promises are supposed to work and could work, and um, a lot of it is like hiding out in front of observables, and that's maybe they're supposed to be doing some of that. So I don't know what's going to happen around that. I'm just kind of assuming that at some point there would be a standard way to either cancel promises or one that has to be replaced with Yeah, right now 
its batch and um, with everything that's good at it. So it will, but will that still, will this still intercept, um, let's say, the injection price? Or yeah. Okay. yeah, basically it looks like it hits everything that comes through, um, regardless of whether you're using XHR or, you know, it's coming from some head, some of the other spark, stuff like that. Um, and the cool thing is it doesn't have to be, like, at the domain that you're at right now, right? So you can go, and once the source worker is registered, if you're making a request to Twitter or something like that from your page, you can intercept those and say, this is what I should return. So like you can use it if you have an API that you're in that you know you need to be available offline. You can cache the response or you know, make a fake response or something in your show, you know, like something that says instead of just a 404 or something that says not available, you can say a nice message that the user would understand saying go online and do this and this stuff. So it's pretty powerful. Um, so I'll show that a little bit more here. Um, yeah, and the other one there is message. That's the only other method. Alright, so I'll show you guys what happens here. So when it starts up, um, it comes in, it hits this install, and um, I'm calling this thing here, and it basically refreshes the cache. And so what it does is there's a cache API that you can use for those workers. Uh, it's pretty simple. Basically, you have, here, I'll come up to where that starts. Sorry for all the code. Um, Alright, so you go, you open the cache, and the way you do that is you call storage.open and then the cache name because you can have a set of caches. Like some applications will cache all their images or kind of more static things in one. Maybe API calls go in another cache, things like that. Um, for the sake of this, I just had one cache that I was using for everything. So you go, you open your cache, um, and then down here, what you can do is once you have the cache available, you can add your URLs to it. And the cool thing here is that, like, you can see I've got URLs on cache, so I'm caching Bootstrap from CDN, I'm caching image from Google Maps, um, some other Bootstrap stuff, and the, none of those are on like, my local host, right? So I'm caching all of those, as well as, uh, I'm using Webpacker basically to inject a directory listing with some exclusions for the local files as well. Is there permission for it? Like, what's the stuff an ad network? Intercepting everything. Well, so like, when it installs, when it registers, it has to be registered um, by the page itself. So yeah, you couldn't, let's say, inject an iframe that has to be for the ones for the main page. So only service work, work, work within the bounds of the iframe. Yeah, exactly. So like you couldn't, I, mean, I guess, unless you expose that so that you have like, a hook for people to register a service worker, maybe. Um, but the actual boundary between the page and the service worker itself, too, is the same as the web worker, where it's all going back and forth, just with post message, too. So there's some restrictions there in terms of what can actually traverse that boundary as well between the page. Because one of the other things that's cool is, let's say you have a multi-page app, but you want to have one service worker that kind of is responsible for caching users to start all of them. You can register the same service worker and say it controls like a whole set of pages that are part of the domain. So it's, it's really cool. You can use it to kind of orchestrate between multiple pages in the same app, which is crazy for me. Um, yeah, so anyway, you can, ca you can cache these, but then when it comes down to using that, like once you've added the cache, I'm going to skip some of this stuff here, but it's very little things. Um, when you come down and do the fetch, what you do is the event itself has a respond with method where you can either do a fetch, like here, and just return whatever the results of the request would be. Or you can pass, pass it through the cat, and then the first match that it hits, it basically has the same return as it would fetch. Um, but the interesting thing is that you can't really go and work with the data that's in that if it's coming from a different domain in course and you know, respecting cores and stuff like that. Because it's confusing, like in this context, you would want to be able to serve data that perhaps you don't have access to if you're doing XHR or things. Um, so it's weird if you actually try to um, access the data that's coming from the cache sometimes, you can get a core error and stuff that's offline, which is really confusing because you're not online. <laughs> but they've, they've taken all those kind of security ideas and captured them inside the cache as well. And you must just cache all that and it's um, Yeah, so this, like right now, is the main part of it. Um, I'll show you guys quickly. How messaging works. It's pretty simple too. Um, 
this is the part that's exact the same as before. I think they actually use the same interface. So all you do is you add a listener for message, um, and an event is going to come through with some data attached to it. And in your main page, you go and the service worker, once it's registered for the page, it basically has a controller. Um, so if there's a service worker running on your page, you can look at the controller and if it's undefined, there's no service worker that's running right now. If it's defined, that's basically how you can go in. You don't get a direct reference to the service worker, but you can do things like post messages to it. You can see, you know, is it already installed? Is it still activating? And stuff like that. You can carry those. Um, so in this case, yeah, you just post a message to it, and then it's going to trigger that event. And you can go, if you want to, and actually make a message channel. And you basically pass one of the ports into the post. <coughs> so if you want to have two-way like, bi-directional communication, you can. 